Hi, this is Political News in 5, and today is March 19th, 2023. Now, I'm starting with the state of affairs before the March 18th gubernatorial and state house of assembly elections. Now, in Lagos, there was a WhatsApp message going that went viral warning people about the Oro Festival, which is a Yoruba cultural festival that prohibits women and non-indigenous from participating and going out. Many saw this as calculated to suppress voter turnout and of course the timing was considered political now the media eventually covered the story saying that the oral festival was going to end on friday but if anyone's guess how many people saw the first notice but didn't see the second and so already we can be sure that voter turnout for the gubernatorial which that's that's the trend anyway will be lower than the 27 percent that we saw in on february 25th then we had an increase in religious and ethnic baiting again lagos the epicenter of the battle typically between yorubas and the Igbos. they we had mc oluomo a known tinubu acolyte and the head of the lagos national union for road transport workers nurtw also described in, in wikipedia as lagos state's most richest and most illustrious agbero <laughs> too funny he was caught on video saying that you know if yachukudi an Igbo name uh, is not going to vote for APC she shouldn't turn out people reported the matter to the police saying that this was a threat against Igbo people following up on other threats that MC Oloma had made around the February 25th elections and the police came out to say that yes MC Oloma is a comedian because MC Oloma said he was joking anyway and people not to take the, the remark seriously on the religious side, you have Aisha Binani, a senator with the APC ticket to contest the gubernatorial elections. She's facing a lot of campaign against her candidacy on the basis that Islam does not support women in leadership positions, which is not true. We know that because other countries with a higher concentration of Muslims have elected women in. And besides, in the Second Republic, the Grand Mufti of Nigeria, Sheikh Saleh, had already come up with a fatwa to address this issue and point out that there's no basis for any interpretation in Islam to exclude women from leadership. But of course, that rhetoric still continues to resonate, unfortunately. And then finally, under the what was going on before the elections, the Naira's scarcity continues to bite. And it's anyone's guess whether that will also further affect voter turnout, whether for people who need to be mobilized or people who need to travel. Now, speaking of the elections itself, what was at stake? We had 993 um, state House Assembly seats up for grabs. We also have 28 gubernatorial seats up for grab being contested. And indirectly, we have 774 local governments whose future is also at stake as whoever becomes governor and whoever is the state legislature will have an influence on how well local governments are run. And we <clears throat> certainly need our local governments to be more impactful in terms of delivering public goods. Now, same stories that we heard in February 25th continued. You know, INEC operatives either not coming with the BVAS, uh, wrong ballot papers, ballot papers being snatched and destroyed, Lagos, Rivers, Delta, Kano, as predicted, hot beds of contestation. These, these four states are states where for the last 24 years the same party has held power. And so there's a lot of contestation where people really want reforms and want to change or re reform the status quo and take power back from these parties. Media has been intimidated. Lots of stories of voters being turned back. Again, targeted areas where they know that these are the areas for opposition, whether it's APC as opposition or PDP as opposition or LP as oppo opposition. In the states where there's an incumbent in power, um, there's, th there's definitely a lot of contestation. There's stories of votes going for about 10,000 Naira in Kano, in addition to the intimidation. It's quite interesting to watch, and we'll see what the end results will be. Speaking of end results, the presidential election lawsuits, the last day to file is March 19th, a Sunday, which is a bit odd. One would expect it to be on a Monday. But as a few days ago, INEC had still not completely uploaded all the result sheets from the presidential elections. About 6% of the polling units results are still missing. So it's anyone's guess whether this timeline will be extended. INEC needs to do the needful. It's, pop, it's not logical to expect the candidates who are contesting the elections to do so with incomplete results. Let's hope that the situation is not going to affect 
the uploading of the gubernatorial elections and i'm quite sure that there will also be major contestation in some states uh, and again INEC will be on the hot seat it's unfortunately INEC always comes off across as being a party to whatever regain took place and so they're always made defendants and i think that needs to change and is should not be a defendant in that sense they're supposed to be neutral unfortunately maybe then it's because people know they're not neutral that they're very happy to take that position as a defendant to defend the results that they have announced let's hope that they'll be a lot more reticent uh, over the gubernatorial elections about announcing results until they're very sure that they should do so that's it on political news in five. Have a great week ahead. Stay safe and let's see what the results will be in the next couple of days.